So Louise Robinson is a consultant forensic psychiatrist at Lancashire Care NHS Trust, and she's a senior lecturer in the University of Manchester. And Kerry Guttridge is a research fellow in the Centre for Women's Health at the University of Manchester. And Louise and Kerry have focused their research interest, interest for a number of years on the development, robust testing of interventions for both women and men who self-harm in prisons. So I'll now hand over to Louise and Kerry. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Can I just check you can hear me? Yeah, great. Thank you. So this afternoon, Kerry and I are going to talk about the work that we've been doing with our team in Manchester on developing interventions for self-harm in prison. Um, all of the research is funded by the NIHR. And we're going to talk about five projects today. Um, I'm going to talk about COVER, which is a study of medical skin camouflage for women who self-harm and have scarring in prison. I'm going to talk about Worship 3, which is a study for uh, women who repeatedly self-harm in prison. And then I'm going to talk about PRIS school, which is a study that we've planned for interventions for self-harm in men's prison. And then Kerry will talk about Cell Soothe, which is a study of a digital app for women who self-harm in prison, and COPE, which is a study of COVID in prison environments and its relationship with self-harm. So we've heard a lot about self-harm in prison already, but for the purposes of our studies, we've, got a very, we've deliberately chosen a very broad definition of self-harm. So we use the definition where it's any act where someone deliberately harms themselves, regardless of the method, intent or severity of any injury. And we're aware that men's self-harm and women's self-harm can be very different. And in our work, we've developed gender specific interventions for that reason, to take that into account. Our work has been informed throughout by men and women with experience of self-harm in prison. So we've talked to them in planning our studies and in conducting them. And what we want to do is to develop a stepped care model of interventions to self-harm so that we can match the intensity of the need of the person self-harming with the intensity of the intervention. So the first study I'm going to talk about is COVER, which we've completed. And this was a study um, of medical skin camouflage for women with self-harm scarring in prison, which, as you know, is, is really quite common. We know that scarring has long term effects on people's social interaction and quality of life, but there's been very little research or understanding of recovery for women with self-harm scarring in prison. And the intervention we looked at is called medical skin camouflage. Um, Louise, and this is sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. People can't see the slides, sorry. Oh, you're joking. Why can they not see the slides? I think people I just might have to click on you and it will come up. If you, yes, if you click on it, it will, it will pop up in front of you. It's a box at the bottom. I don't know if I'm next to all the faces. Is that coming up? Because I'm I haven't changed anything from when I was doing Jenny slides. It's up on mine. Yes, we can see it. I think we just it, once people have clicked on you, it's fine. Ah, oh, OK, good. Right. So medical skin camouflage is the intervention that we looked at in cover. And this is a prescribable makeup essentially, but it's a very durable waterproof makeup that will last for several days and it covers self-harm scarring and it has to be colour matched to the person. Um, and there is some evidence in the community and young people that it led, its use led to improved confidence and ability to engage in activities. So COVA was the first study to, to deliver this medical skin camouflage intervention in a women's prison and we did that in HMP style. And, and the nature of the study was it was what's called a feasibility and acceptability randomised control trial. So we wanted to see, could we deliver it in a prison and could we conduct a small trial to see if a trial was possible? So could we randomise women to receive it or not receive it and then measure outcomes? And the design was that women either went to receive the, the treatment or they went onto a waiting list control, which meant that during the study they didn't receive the intervention. But at the end, all of the women had access to the skin camouflage. And what was unusual about the study was that the intervention itself was delivered by women in prison. So we trained women who were um, served long sentences to uh, meet with women in the trial, to explain, them about, explain to them about skin camouflage and colour match them. 
So we were able to randomize women either to the intervention group for six weeks and 26 women went into that group or to the waiting list control and 25 went into that group and 45 completed follow up interviews. So we meet, met our targets for recruitment and we showed we could, we could get data. So we got really useful data on difficulties in delivering medical skin camouflage in prison and we could collect data on self harm on quality of life, well-being, self-esteem before and after, on the resources used for self-harm, and importantly, how acceptable the intervention was to women. And I've put just one quote here from the, the work we did talking to women about how acceptable it was. And I, there was uh, there was quite a few I could have chosen from because actually all of the feedback from the women about the intervention was very positive. And overall, the women said that the medical skin camouflage increased confidence and self-esteem, improved relationships with staff, they felt less judged and they socialised and exercised more. And two actually said that they stopped self-harming. So the next stage for our team is to develop a full scale study of the impact of this intervention on self-harm. The next study I'm going to talk about is Worship 3, which is uh, the repeat self-harm intervention pragmatic study and this is for women who repeat, repeat self-harm who are high risk and high need and the intervention we are looking at here is called PIT psychodynamic interpersonal therapy and this is a talking therapy done one-to-one -one, and it's very brief so women usually have between four and eight sessions and it helps the women learn new ways of managing their emotions and relating to other people and there's some evidence it's particularly effective following childhood trauma which is really relevant to this population and there's evidence already from the community that it can impact on rates of repeat self-harm. So in the study, we had already adapted PIT, this intervention, to be used in prison because it was initially a community intervention. And we conducted a, a small trial, which was to assess the feasibility and acceptability of the intervention. So could we deliver it in a prison? Could we deliver it as a trial? Um, and how did the women respond? And we found that we could deliver it as a trial. The major pro main problem was that we had a lot of women dropping out. And so we had to develop strategies to, to explain to women more about it and keep them in the trial. Feedback about PIT was very, very positive. Women talked about having someone to talk to, uh, um, really um, appreciating having help in recognizing emotions before, during and after self-harm, feeling supported and listening to, understanding the impact of their self-harm on others having insights into themselves and exploring past and present relationships and their impact on lives. And the, the, our model was that the actual therapy is delivered by psychiatric and um, psychology trainees. And the research question is, um, is PIT, the intervention, is it effective and cost effective when compared with what men, women get normally with treatment as usual? And the major question is, does it reduce self-harm to a number of incidents? But we also want to know, does it, make, does it affect severity of self-harm, thoughts of self-harm, suicidal ideation, depression, hopelessness, quality of life, self-esteem and well-being. And finally, is it cost effective? So the trial Worship 3 is a randomised control trial. Each woman gets between four and eight sessions of PIT. It's happening across five prisons and we started recruiting in October 2019 and it was going very well until March when we had to stop the study. We're hoping to restart in January of next year and we will aim to recruit 264 women. And then finally, the last study I want to briefly talk about is a study that we're planning to start again at the beginning of next year when we can go back into prisons. And this is an exploratory study of interventions for self-harm in men's prisons. And the aim of this study is to find the right treatments to test in future clinical trials to see if they reduce self-harm. So first of all, the picture of what's happening in all prisons at the moment for self-harm isn't clear. There seem to be lots of interventions given by lots of different agencies and we want to clearly identify identify and describe what's currently being delivered in, in England in, in prison and we're going to do that by working with staff and then we want to do work to understand the experience of self-harm and particularly the, the experience of its treatment among men and staff in prisons and then finally we're going to talk to them about potential future treatments that they might find acceptable and useful with a view to then informing future planning future trials and I'll just hand over to Kerry now who's going to talk about two further studies Okay, thanks Louise. Um, hi everybody. So I'm going to talk about a couple of studies, um, Cell Soothe and Cope. Um, next slide please. 
So um, the Cell Soothe project has been funded. Um, it was due to start in um, May this year, but we've pushed it back to January and we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can start preparing for the project then. So Cell Soothe, um, like Cover, is a feasibility and acceptability trial. And the aim of the research is to collaboratively co-design an in-cell digital app for women in prison who self-harm. And then um, we also want to run a small trial in the same way that we did in cover to test the feasibility and acceptability of um, doing a trial to test this app within a prison environment. And so um, there's a pressing need to get robust evidence on um, preventative interventions and um, mental health apps in the community have been shown to be affordable, um, usable, safe and effective and have helped people to self-manage um, their mental health needs across a range of conditions. So the idea is that um, we would co-design an app um, together with women in prison and together with our partners um, from uh, self-injury support um, and the app would contain uh, self-harm educational material, um, sources of support that might be prison specific, uh, a way that, that women can monitor their self-harm thoughts and acts to see if they can notice any patterns of behavior, any particular triggers for their self-harm. And then it would also include information that has, um, like evidence-based information that has been designed to distract people from self-harm, information on, on possible alternative coping strategies and also a soothing space of um, relaxing imagery that women can add content to. Uh, next slide please. So um, briefly the way that this, um, this project will work is there's 21 months at the start of the project to co-design the app and that will involve um, working with the with women in prison to um, look at content, what they think would be helpful, beneficial, but also working with staff within the prisons um, to address any barriers, any issues, any problems of you using this kind of technology in prison. We're very aware that um, digital intervention in prison is in its infancy um, and part of this project is to see whether this is something is, that is feasible to do now um, using things such as security approved tablets or laptops with a view to developing something that could be integrated into the digital hub. Um, once we've co-designed the app, the idea is that we'll run a small randomised control trial in, in two prisons where the intervention group will use the app for three weeks and like cover will look at the collection of outcomes, how feasible it is to do this kind of trial, whether there are any problems um, that we found trying to do this kind of research within prison with the idea that hopefully we can move on to do a clinical and cost effectiveness trial. Next slide. The other research that um, I'll briefly speak about is the COPE project. Um, with this project, we've had an indication that will be funded, but we are waiting for the final agreement from the NIHR. So it's kind of hot off the press. Um, and this project is designed to examine the impact of the pandemic and also the protective measures that have been put in place in prison to minimise transmission. What these these things have, the effect that these things have had on self-harm. And the idea is that we'll quantify which variables are associated with self-harm. And alongside this, we'll also do detailed consultation with, sorry, I should have said next slide. <laughs> And um, we'll also do detailed consultation um, with um, prisoners and staff to ensure that the project is um, informed by stakeholder views. So the project involves understanding prisoners and staff perspectives about the impact of COVID, um, looking at um, identifying individual um, environmental and policy factors which may exp explain variance in self-harm rates during COVID, that's variance between prisons or variance between prisoners, 
Um, and the idea will be that the analysis will identify prisons and prisoners that were particularly vulnerable um, to COVID's effect on self-harm and also factors which improve resilience. So this is um, funded by the NIHR policy stream and the idea is that we will cr create recommendations to inform policy on man managing and mitigating the effects of the pandemic on mental health, um, but we there's also the potential to identify new um, universal causes of self-harm um, for future benefit in prisons. Next slide, please. So what the project involves is we're running a consultation with the Prison Policy Network, um, and that's in partnership with the Prison Reform Trust, so we can get feedback from prisoners themselves on the effects of the pandemic on their self-harm and mental health. Then we will design a short staff telephone survey to um, find out prison level changes um, that might have influenced self-harm. And then we would collect data from NOMIS and from centrally held HMPPS data. Um, and, and that data will enter into the analysis. Um, with all our research, particularly the, um, the new projects, um, we welcome discussion with stakeholders, um, anybody who's interested in getting in touch with us to find out more about the research and to hear more about things, then our contact details are on the next slide. Thank you very much.